the other end. Well, Tor, thanks for that chit-chat with the ambassador right there, breaking down some of the timelines around the AUC chair position. And according to a tentative calendar of events, aspiring candidates have between February and March to declare their interest for the seat. We've seen that happen with one of the candidates before ushering in the AU to announce the candidates who will have met that cut. After that, the candidates will appear before a panel, a panel rather, of eminent persons who will vet candidates and draw up a short list after that or rather this is to ensure that candidates are chosen on merit and not solely through deal making between states and regions the short list will open up the official campaigns and elections will therefore be held in 2025 but back to some of the issues we've seen imagine Bichachi, i'd like to begin with you on this because there's a proposal that has been circulated to member states i think it was last week tuesday that says only female contenders should be eligible in the next contest even though the seat will be rotating to the east africa region so if this particular proposal goes through, what does it mean for Raila Odinga? Well, first and foremost, uh, there's, there's a bit of, uh, how do I put it, uh, uh, horse trading uh, when it comes to this particular issue. Mm -hmm. uh, in the East African region, there's only one country that has a female candidate. Only one. And that is Rwanda. Okay? But the proposals being issued now okay. require every member country to agree. So the question is not whether Raila Odinga will run for that seat and whether these rules will kick him out. The question is, does President William Ruto support Raila's bid? Then I can assure you, you've got at least one vote <laughs> that will shoot those proposals down. That vote will be Kenya's vote. For sure. So you just need one vote to you shoot these proposals one vote to and it would pass. Yes. So those okay. proposals are dead in the water. Mm. Dead in the water. And I'll tell you why. It is extremely profitable and expedient for President William Ruto, both in terms of his governing the country for the next three years and in terms of his political fortunes in 2027. It is extremely expedient for him that Raila Odinga goes for that AU seat. Kenya will not allow for those proposals to go through. So there's no need even to lose any amount of sleep because of it. The candidature of Raila Odinga can only be threatened by one human being. He's called Kikwet. There's no one else. From where you sit? Okay. I can tell you mm. the gravitas, the amount of impetus that Kenya is going to put onto it needs to be put in perspective with Amina's bid. Remember, yeah. former CS Amina ran for this office. She lost by three votes. Three votes. Now, the rotation is in East Africa. The candidate is Raila Odinga. The profile of Raila Odinga versus Amina is worlds apart, and Amina was only three votes shy of it. Okay. Okay. Raila Odinga stands the biggest chance of getting that seat. So the question for me is a matter of when, not even if. Because if President Kikwete does not declare he is standing, because Kikwete is, is first, remember, he's East African, but also Tanzania is part of this SADC, the South African uh, uh, conglomeration. So he's likely to get a bulk of South African support. But in the absence of Kikwete, All right. The campaign will be over by June. Interesting to note. Um, perhaps let's bring the local political <laughs> angle.